In this morning's Health Watch, fever phobia. One of the most common reasons parents seek medical help for their kids is a fever. But a new report out today offers an interesting perspective on fever and how we should respond to it. Medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here with the latest. First of all, for people at home, what actually causes a fever? Well, Erica, this is so important. This clinical report really focuses on parents' misconceptions of fever and possibly errors in treating it. So when you look at a fever and the physiology behind it, really, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's the body's response responds usually to a bacterial or viral infection and it really kind of jump starts the immune system and is helpful in fighting that infection so it's really not all bad. Okay so there are lots of good things obviously your right. body's doing it for a reason. When though as a parent should you become concerned about your child's fever? Well the flip side of a fever Erica and any parent or caregiver of a child or baby knows this is that fevers can make kids feel really crummy. They can be irritable and in some cases it can cause dehydration. Mm -hmm. The big concern of seizures really really has not been borne out in extensive data and research, so that's not usually a factor. And when you say that, that's because some parents are concerned that if the fever's too high, their child can that's have a correct. seizure. That's correct. And in medicine, okay. we don't even consider something a fever unless it's above 100.4 degrees. Now, when you should worry as a parent or a caregiver, if you have a newborn, a baby under the age of four months, and they have a fever over 102, or, mm -hmm. or really any fever at all, you want to talk to their pediatrician. In general, for children, you want to bring their fever down to below 102 degrees. Do not wake them up if they're sleeping to give them pain me uh, fever medication. Okay. But if they have any other signs, they're lethargic, they're inconsolable, they're vomiting, they have a rash, or the fever persists more than a few days, obviously you want to talk to their pediatrician. Okay, you mentioned something really important there. Don't wake them up to give them medicine. Correct. But a lot of people do treat fevers in their children with different over-the-counter medicines. Right. What's the best way to do that? Well, there are two basic classes of medication that work. Acetaminophen known as Tylenol mm -hmm. or ibuprofen known as Motrin or Advil, both very, very effective. We need to remember never to give aspirin to a child who has a fever because that can be dangerous and you want to give the proper dose. All of these mm -hmm. medications for children are dosed based on the child's weight, not their age, not their height. And if you look at the numbers of parents or caregivers as they treat children, 50% give the wrong dose wow. and 15% give too much medication, and these can potentially affect the liver and the kidneys, so you have to give the correct dose. And if you're not sure about it, call your doctor. Absolutely. And they will tell you. That's what we're here for. What about for adults? We're talking about kids. Right. Do all the same rules apply? Similar. You know, both of these classes of medications will be helpful in bringing a fever down for an adult if there are any other significant signs stiffness in the neck, vomiting, diarrhea, a rash, or the fever persists more than a couple of days, definitely you want to speak to your doctor. Great to have you put it all in perspective for you us. Jen, okay. thanks. For more to do on for more on what to do rather when your child has a fever, just log on to our partner in health, webmd.com and search fever in kids.